It used to be that you would write an article or give a speech about how Republicans would love to turn back the clock on women's rights, and you get a lot of kind but condescending expressions and responses. Many women and men who would read these articles thought that this not only could never happen, but they couldn't imagine that Republicans had the desire and will to actually do it. I've always believed deep down that if the GOP thought that they could get away with turning back the clock on women's rights, they would definitely try. Two generations of women have been born since the feminist movements of the late 60s and early 1970s. That means that around half the women in this country do not know life before the hard-fought gains of the women that came before them. Generations X and Y have never known a world where women don't have the right to make their own reproductive, reproductive choices, like contraceptives and abortion. They have never known a world where the statutes against the workplace crime of sexual harassment didn't exist. They don't remember a world where women who wanted to have a career outside of teaching or nursing were met with virtually immutable resistance. There are still some glass ceilings around now waiting to be breached, but before the early 1970s, there weren't ceilings. There were glass boxes for women. Women had very few choices about how they could live their lives and how their intimate relations could be conducted. Society nearly demanded that women submit to control by their husbands and the demands of stay-at-home motherhood and housekeeping. Those of us who were born or came of age after that time don't know what that was like, and it should be said that while women are far better off now than before the 1970s, much work needs to be done. Still, all this time, the Republican Party has been conspiring to return women to the glass box. It's obvious now that was the case, but what made it obvious to me before the recent GOP war on women was the statements by conservative pundits and media personalities like, yeah, Rush Limbaugh. Long before he attacked Sandra Fluke as a, quote, slut, he had an ongoing several decades war against women's rights activists. He would belittle them, he'd call them names like feminazis, and Limbaugh was far from the only one. What's clear now is that these conservative media personalities were purposefully weakening the women's rights movement. They were ridiculing the idea that there was a reason to continue to have women's rights activists. They claimed that they were all anti-men and all the other slander and innuendo we've heard from Rush and his ilk over the last 30 years, all the while biding their time for when they hoped to go on the attack legislatively. When Republicans won back the House in 2010 and reduced the Democratic control in the Senate to one seat and had President Obama seemingly reeling and fighting to stay on his feet, they launched their war on women. The first salvos were launched during the run-up to the 2010 election. Five high-profile Tea Party Republican Senate candidates, Rand Paul of Kentucky, Ken Buck of Colorado, Joe Miller of Alaska, Sharon Angle of Nevada, and Christine O'Donnell of Delaware, announced they were against a woman's right to have an abortion, even in the case of rape or incest. They wanted women who were raped and girls who got pregnant by a relative to be forced to bear those children. Several Republican Senate and House candidates also announced they were against birth control pills and other contraceptive choices for women. During that campaign, you had Republican Senator DeMint say if someone is openly homosexual, they shouldn't be teaching in the classroom. And he holds the same position on an unmarried woman who's sleeping with her boyfriend. She shouldn't be in the classroom. No mention whatsoever, of course, about men who are promiscuous with women. After the election, we had an attempt by congressional Republicans to change the definition of rape to that of, quote, forcible rape. Now this is, well this is ostensibly an attempt to deny taxpayer payer funding of abortions for women. The redefining of rape would have had serious consequences beyond that law. In the law, women who were drugged or incapacitated by a rapist, who were blackmailed into sex, or faced some other coercion other than physical coercion, would have not been considered to have been raped under that statute. As though, also as a result of that law, statutory rape would not have been considered rape, nor would incest have been considered rape. Low-income women in those categories would have been forced to bear their rapists' children. Now, after the 2010 election, it got worse. Two states, Texas and Virginia, drafted laws that require women have a 10-inch ultrasound probe shoved into their vaginas if they wanted to have an abortion. The idea behind this state-sponsored rape was to humiliate women by the experience and also hope that if women saw their first trimester fetus on the screen, they would have second thoughts. Now, in Virginia, popular outcry forced the governor and state legislature to revise the law to require a regular outside of its skin ultrasound. But Texas's Republican legislature and Governor Rick Perry passed the law, and it is in effect as we speak. 
Then, of course, we have Rush Limbaugh's infamous attacks on Sandra Fluke, where over a three-day period he called her a slut in other similar terms 50 times, simply because Sandra Fluke was advocating for birth control pills to be covered by health insurance. Rush made no mention, of course, of Viagra or Cialis, which are covered by health insurance, and which, it's rumored, he has a prescription for one or both. That's in addition to dozens of other laws attacking Planned Parenthood, abortion, and other women's contraceptive options that have been drafted by the Republican Congress. Republicans have been busy, and their ultimate goal is simple. They want women under the control of men. A woman who does not have access to contraception cannot be intimate and protect herself from pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases. She then either has to be abstinent, and with a human population that has exploded to 3 billion people, we can see how easy that is, or she, can, she has to get married young and start having babies. I, I was on vacation with my daughter and one of her friends from high school, and I mentioned the attacks on contraception, and my daughter's friend asked me, has anything been said about men? Has anybody said anything about men having relations outside of marriage or men's contraceptive, op contraceptive options? And I replied, no. And my daughter's friend said, quote, so the Republicans want to screw over the girls? And I exclaimed, yes, you've got it, perfectly set. A 16-year-old who hasn't started to be interested in politics, partisan or otherwise, got it immediately. Republicans want women to have no choice other than to get married, get pregnant, have children, clean house, and obey their husbands. To the vast majority of Republicans, women are nothing but wombs and maids. Now, despite my obvious and freely stated partisan leanings, I wanted to check and see whether any Republicans have dissented with their party's war against women. What have the most prominent Republicans had to say about what's going on? Let's take a look. Starting with Mitt Romney, the party's presumptive presidential nominee. But there are others. Planned Parenthood, we're going to get rid of that. Uh, the, the subsidy for uh, Amtrak, I would eliminate that. Coming up with false issues, uh, making contraception uh, an issue that they suggest uh, Republicans are, are having a war on women. And uh, I wish Ann were here. My wife were here for a lot of reasons. I wish you were here. But, uh, but I wish she were here to answer that question in particular. Because she says that she's going across the country and talking with women. And what they're talking about is the debt that we're So Romney's contributions regarding the war against women are to join in by attacking Planned Parenthood and then dismiss women's concerns by saying what they really care about is the debt. Is there anything more insulting and dismissive than telling someone what you're upset about and then have them turn around and say to you, oh, you silly person, that's not really what you're upset about. You're concerned about this other thing. It's those emotions getting in the way of, what you, of, of you understanding what you really want. Now, I'm reading just a little into what Romney said, but when you discount what someone tells you, it's insulting. It takes on that kind of character. Let's see what other Republicans have to say. Looking at the polls, you have a gender gap problem. I mean, you know, recent polls show a huge, huge uh, uh, margin for Democrats uh, with among women voters. How big a problem is it? Well, How do you close it? Well, for one thing, you know, if the Democrats said we had a war on caterpillars and every mainstream media outlet talked about the fact that Republicans have a war on caterpillars, then we'd have problems with caterpillars. Now, can the RNC be more insulting to women? Let's quite equate a war on women with a war on caterpillars, because women are just like caterpillars, right? Republicans like to do this. They like to compare human beings with feelings to animals. They compare women with caterpillars, and they compare the relationships between gay men to a relationship between a man and a dog, or various other animals. Priebus lives up to the consonants in his name with his caterpillars remark. I think Providence is trying to tell us something, because if you remove the vowels from Rens Priebus's name, you are left with RNC, PR, BS. Surely, though, there have to be women on the Republican side that have complained about how Republicans are dealing with women's issues, right? My policy is not based on a label. It's based on what I lived and what I know. Women don't care about contraception. They care about jobs and the economy and raising their families and all of those things. And so we well, should never... about contraception, too. Yeah. But that's not the only thing they care about. No, the media but... wants to talk about contraception. But when somebody but like is... Rick Santorum says yes. he's going to take it away, we care. Yeah. Well... Uh... How disappointing is that? One of the highest level female elected officials in the Republican Party, a governor of a major state, a state, in fact, which I love to visit, did the same thing that Mitt Romney did and discounted what grassroots women are saying. Women don't care about contraception? Does Governor Haley really think 
that the women of this country will buy the argument that it's okay that men's erectile dysfunction medication should be covered by health insurance, but a woman's birth control should not be? And, of course, we have the Ann Romney versus Hillary Rosen flap, which the Republicans have tried to trump up as some kind of slap at stay-at-home moms. What we Democrats really think is that working-class mothers, or mothers in the 99%, deserve a lot of credit and support regardless of whether they are in the workforce or stay-at-home moms. All of us know that mothers in the top 1% of wealth in this country have all kinds of resources they can throw at the difficult tasks of parenthood. We don't worry about mothers in the 1% who have staffs full of nannies, governesses, maids, butlers, etc. for each of their multiple homes. Those folks have no idea about how hard it is to be a parent and shouldn't be trying to tell the rest of us that they do. It's insulting. I had to look far and wide for a single Republican that's willing to take the party to task for what is obvious to everyone outside of the Republican Party, both here and abroad. Lisa Murkowski, the Republican senator from Alaska, had this to say in a recent radio interview. Let me ask you this from, a, from just a, a strategic and tactical uh, uh, side of thinking. Of, are, are the Republicans make, maybe stepping into a, a trap? And I mean, do they really... What, I guess the question I'm trying to ask is, what are they thinking of uh, alienating so many women? I asked the same question to my colleagues. I said, it, 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 it makes no sense to go down this road. It makes no sense to attack women. And if you don't view this as an attack on, a women, on women, then you need to go home and you need to talk to your wives. You need to go talk to your daughters. Ask them if they feel that this is an attack. Because this is how women are perceiving the situation. Finally, we have one Republican who actually cares about women are saying, but we had to go outside the contiguous 48 states to find them. Outside of Ms. Murkowski, we have an across-the-board, unified Republican war against women. But something happened when Republicans started down this road. Once you dismantle or neglect a group's activist wing, it can take it a while to get it churning again, but women are starting to get active. Reports are coming in from county Democratic Party meetings where women's participation is up significantly, and those women showing up are angry. Where polls were showing Romney and congressional Republicans only a few points behind President Obama in the de and the Democrats in the women's vote, they are now nearly 20 points behind. If I can make a historical analogy here, June of this year will be the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Midway, which marked the turning point in the war in the Pacific. After Pearl Harbor, popular legend has it that the head of Jap Japan's Navy Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto was being congratulated for his victory when he shook his head and lectured his staff. I fear that all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with a terrible resolve. Midway was the beginning of events proving Yamamoto was right. Well, women are 51% of the people and voters in this country. You want to talk about awaking a sleeping giant and filling her with a terrible resolve? Republicans have proved me and others right and taught women how the GOP really feels about them. They have awakened women to the possibility of their rights and freedoms being taken away. These are lessons that women belonging to Generation X and Generation Y will never forget. Women are angry and they are filled, and they are filled with a terrible resolve. They should be angry. When Election Day comes, none of us should forget what the Republicans would do if they controlled both branches of Congress and the White House. We know who they are now. We know them. They have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt who they are and what they would do if given the chance. Now it's up to us to make them pay the price.